breakfast is Spanish eggs. They taste good. I needed to add some salt. They were pretty bland. Not as good as the goulash was last night, but a nice hot breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. So here's our rundown for today. We are currently at Silver Lake. When we leave camp, we will be leaving away from the lake. We're not going to like walk along the shore too far. We're going to make our way up around here. Uh, two, three point, two point three miles all the way to the camp at Canary Pond, crossing a footbridge along the way. I believe that's part of the that branch of the west of the Second Dog River. And then we will continue up past that Canary Pond. We're going to go another one point three, and we got to watch out for beaver activity. Those little busy beavers. And uh, looks like we'll cross another spot here and continue another two point four miles up to. The lean-to at Mud Lake. Yes, that is another Mud Lake. <laughs> it seems to be a popular lake name. After lunch at Mud Lake, we'll make our way up through the pass between Mud Lake Mountain and Grindstone Mountain. And keep looping around until we cross the west branch of the Sackandaga River. So that should be a big crossing. There's a footbridge there. I believe that's a big suspension bridge. Cool spot. Sign at the trail register to let folks know that we are there safe and sound. And continue past the Big Eddy Trail. I've done Big Eddy before, it's really beautiful. Um, but we continue past it, another 0.8 miles, another 0.6 miles, and then we're going to cross Hamilton Lake Stream, which is where we will camp for the night. Alright, we are packed up, cleared out, ready to go. Let's hit the trail. <music> on the Adirondacks to have some really good uh, facilities. It's a cool spot. Oh boy. That big old tree that came down. Check this out. Nifty. So I often think clearest in the morning and uh, I'm just out here at day three and I don't know part of this part of this whole journey out here is reconnecting with God but uh, you know it's easy to come out on a trail expecting to meet God and I don't know feeling like it's not all that different you're just in the woods you're still living life you're still doing your routines Something I've come to realize over the years is that being in the woods, spending time quiet, it's less about trying to somehow conjure up God, trying to get God to just show up because you happen to take a break from your life. It's more about taking a long enough period of time to be quiet. To let your All that racing that happens in your mind, all that brain racing, to let it quiet down to kind of still your spirit and I rarely actually end up hearing from God while I'm out here. Instead what happens on my normal trips is I take a day or two where I'm quiet and I'm alone with God and then when I get back to regular life my brain has slowed down enough that when God is ready to speak to me on his time I'm ready to listen. And you know, the woods aren't the only place where you can go to slow down and to quiet your mind. But it is really important to take that time to slow down and quiet your mind. Because God doesn't speak on a schedule. He doesn't just wait for us to pray to him and then speak when we're ready. He speaks to us when he's ready. And it's our job to be ready to listen. I know that there's man-made steps that I'm walking on here. But, uh, I tell you, coming across a bog pond clearing like this in the middle of the... Adirondacks doesn't feel much more wild. <laughs> Keep expecting to see a moose or a bear or something when I come across a spot like this. That'd be awesome. 
All right, so it's 9.30. I've made it to the camp site here at Canary Pond. It's a pretty little pond. Um, it's a cool campsite here. It's kind of open, but it's also a little protected out here in a point. Oh, really cool looking. I think I'm going to drop the warm layer and uh, grab a swig of water before I keep hiking. Heading back on the trail, and we got 1.3 miles until it's the crossing at the river at the base of uh, like Big Moose Mountain or something like that. Um, at the base of this mountain, there's a river crossing, but the the main feature is that there's a warning on the map that the trail conditions may vary based on beaver activity. So we might get wet. We'll see what happens. See when we get there. We got my 1.3 miles to go. All right, I made it to the beaver pond here at uh, Moose Mountain. The beavers have definitely been active here, but the trail keeps going that way. So far, so good. We'll see how it keeps going, but you can uh, you can definitely see the uh, the beaver hut there right in the middle. They're not uh, intending to hide the fact that they own this place. <laughs> They're such fascinating creatures. Four miles to the next mud lake. It looks like we've made it to Mud Lake. I'm gonna keep hiking along, see if I can't find lean to. And uh, plan was to have <clears throat> lunch at that lean to, and my my legs want to have lunch at that lean to, but it's only 11:20. There's not really a great spot to do lunch besides here without going another one, two and a half, another two and a half miles, which is going to put me closer to like 130. So I think <clears throat> I will stop for lunch here, um, take a little breather, maybe even throw a line in here at Mud Lake. Who knows? Maybe I'll catch something here, but <clears throat> I'll show you when I find a lean-to. the uh, uh, mud pond, the second mud pond that we've come across, and I've met Heidi and Bob here. They're from Syracuse. Hello! Hi. Uh, what was your favorite part of the trail so far? We think that we like uh, the beaver dam that yeah. we came across today the yeah, most. Yeah, it's really cool. It ponded up this whole huge area and kind of created this cool little waterfall thing to cross uh, behind. Yeah, that was huge, actually, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big waterfall, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. That was a really pretty spot. We had to cross, because we crossed right where it was dammed up, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, uh, they are heading, and they're planning on getting to Placid in, like, eight, nine days? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Cool. So, they're going to be way ahead of me, but I'm glad I got to meet them, and they're about to head out while I finish my lunch. But it was nice meeting you guys. Yeah, yeah nice, nice meeting you, too. <laughs> came out to filter some water, but there's not really a good spot to access it without getting soaked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep hiking, and when I come across my first stream, I'm going to fill up. Uh, it's urgent for me. I, I just finished my two liters for the morning, but um, when you're out here, you got to be careful. Uh, it's really easy to get dehydrated without realizing it because you're not always as thirsty as you, are, as you need to be. <laughs> what I plan to do is... You gotta measure your hydration levels, and I'm not trying to be gross, but you, you gotta do it by watching your pee. <laughs> if your pee is, you know, relatively clear, then you're good. If it gets dark, then you're getting dehydrated. A little dark, so I need to get more hydrated. Gotta get more water in my system, whether I'm thirsty or not. So, filling up the next stream. All right, it's quarter after 12, and we are back to the trip. <laughs> Come 
Mud Lake down to, uh, I think I'm currently in the pass between two mountains and then I'm going to be heading over to White House to the suspension bridge, which I'm really excited to see and to go fishing on the Sacandaga River, being that I grew up on the Sacandaga Lake. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> according to the map, uh, th I've done a little bit of uphill here and now that I've done this little bit of uphill, it should be pretty much downhill the whole way to White House. I'm curious how my knees will feel with that downhill. They tend to hurt more down than up, but currently they're just telling me, keep it chill, man, don't go too fast. <laughs> Um, but I have noticed that they hurt more, uh, if I stop frequently than they do if I just maintain a nice steady pace. So when the trail gets too rugged to keep a stride going, my knees start screaming. But when it's like this, it's pretty smooth trail, uh, they're doing all right right now. Um, yeah, I also just wanted to mention, it was nice meeting you, Heidi and Bob. It was great, uh actually interacting with other human beings out on the trail. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a great hike. So this is that mountain pass that I was telling you guys about. Mountain goes up there, and the mountain goes up that way. And this is the pass that goes between. Uh, yeah, just like that. Um, I don't know, as I was just walking through here, I, I couldn't help but picture this scene in uh, The Last of the Mohegans, where uh, this group of British soldiers are walking through this mountain pass and uh, Indian raiders come in from both sides and just shut them off. It was brutal. And a hatchet went flying into somebody's head. It was crazy. Cool movie. Check that one out. <laughs> the Last of the Mohegans. These uh, long, gradual downhills. For folks with good knees, these are awesome because you can move fast. You can cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. But uh, when you're like me and you got rough knees, this is the bane of my existence. It's just every step hurts. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited because at the end of this long downhill is a beautiful river. See you there. Gotta love when a tree falls directly on the trail. And this one looks pretty darn fresh. The leaves are still pointing the direction they used to be. And uh, the bark's fresh off. Yeah. I think this is one that I'm not gonna go through. I'm gonna try to find a way around. Yep, there you have it, made it around. That was a uh, big tree. <laughs> About 145 and uh, we have made it to the mighty Sacandaga River and this really cool suspension bridge. Check that out. I'll show you up closer. <laughs> That is super cool. That is tall. <laughs> the size of that. Cool, man. Well, no camping at this spot, but I can at least take lunch, or not lunch, I've already eaten lunch. I can at least take a little break. All right, so I took a little break here at the uh, White House. Um, trailhead at the footbridge that crosses the Sacandaga River. Um, now I've got about two miles to get up to Hamilton Lake Stream Lean 2, which is where I'm going to camp for the night. Uh, it looks like I got a bit of uphill, but shouldn't be too bad of a two mile trek to finish off the day. It's about 2.30 now, now since I took that time to fish it should take me another hour or so to get up there maybe a little more uh, we should be up there by about 3 30 4 o'clock and uh yeah let's go sign that trail register and see if Heidi and Bob have uh made it through there all right we're at the trail junction 
that's to the parking area. That way is back where we came from. And that way is where we're going. So we're heading over this way. I'm just gonna sign the register and yeah. So I've started to notice a pattern in uh, my mood each day. And uh, right about now, that like two to four o'clock range, I'm tired, my knees are aching. Every day it's been a bit gloomy. I start to feel kind of like wah, wah, just trudging along, just keep walking, not super excited about anything. Um, yeah, it's just been interesting to watch how my mood shifts. I seem to be my perkiest in the morning. Sorry, there's a spider hanging from me. Okay, he's gone. Um, yeah, I seem to be my best in the morning. And uh, I fade a little bit just before lunch. And then it seems to kind of work its way downhill from there. See if it's around the corner. So I found the lean-to. It's up another quarter mile past the trail. I turned around because I didn't think it was here. And I turned back around after double checking my map and checking my trail guide. But uh lean to's up this way. Let's see how she looks. Well, here's the lean-to. She looks pretty. Um, nice big fire pit, but uh, any hopes I had of fishing here are gone because this is nowhere near the stream. It's pretty, uh, not exactly named well, but nonetheless, I think I'm going to set up here and just keep you guys posted on where I'm at. I, uh, my knees are hurting really bad. I was walking really slow there. I'm going to See if there's not any access to water where I can dip my feet in um, and just see what I can do. Um, I, I won't be able to keep doing the trail if it's if my knees stay this bad. I just won't last won't won't last. But we'll see how resting a little bit makes me feel. <clears throat> okay, so I've been uh, just sitting here in the lean to thinking through how the day went. Where I'm at here, whether this is going to be a good spot, it's cool to lean to, but <clears throat> I don't need a lean to. I need a water. So I am going to make my way back to the camp site over by the suspension bridge on Hamilton Lake Stream. And uh, set up camp there for the night. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. If I... If my knees still feel the way they do right now, um, tomorrow morning, th this trip's done. Uh, I hope it's not. I hope my knees feel better in the morning as this is just fatigue, but it feels like it might be more than fatigue. It feel, may be a little bit more than they were capable of handling, which... As I make my way back to the campground over by the stream, um, I'm just, my brain's going to all the different places about I'm kicking myself or uh, hurting so much. Is it because I had not enough uh, training? Did I not prepare well enough? Uh, there's been a couple things that happened that I thought I was ready for. Like the, the rain on the first night and I really have been testing out my physical abilities and I thought I was physically ready for this and honestly as I sit here and I think about what's happening what the pain that I'm feeling all along I've been thinking you know it's just my legs getting used to it they're just stiff they're getting used to all this walking 
the pain is exactly where I always get pain when weather changes. And that pain is a result of arthritis, which is the result of me as a teen dislocating each knee over 13, 14 times. Uh, the ligaments and tendons in my knees are mostly just scar tissue, according to the uh, orthopedic. But, like, my muscles, my, my leg muscles feel fine. My upper body, like, they, they feel a little tired, but the, what I'm feeling on my knees isn't fatigue. It's pain. Um, and I, I have to make the right decision. Fighting through fatigue makes you stronger. Fighting through pain makes you stupid. <laughs> so, I'm going to rest up tonight. I think I'm calling this tomorrow. So since this is the last night, I want to talk to you about my cook system. Um, I, I dehydrated my own meal. So like right here, I have shepherd's pie. I pretty much made the ground beef and veggie mix in a big pan. And I have some Idahoan <clears throat> pre-dried potatoes. And in here, <clears throat> <coughs> I'm using a fancy feast stove and boiling water, about two cups, using denatured alcohol, which is here, which you can just get at the hardware store. I made the windscreen out of just a aluminum oven tray. I got a little piece of aluminum foil on the bottom so I don't burn the ground. Um, if you want to look up how to make fancy feast stoves, it's all over YouTube. You can find that just fine. I wouldn't be the best person to learn that from, but I did it following another YouTube video. And once that water's boiling, I'll put enough to just cover the ground beef in there, and then let that <clears throat> reconstitute uh, inside of this pouch. Now, this pouch, just made out of Reflectix, which is material you can get at the hardware store, um, while that stuff sits inside that pouch full of, well, up to the top of the ground beef with water, sits in here and stays warm while it rehydrates. Um, once it's done rehydrating, I'll add a little bit more of the warm water into the potatoes, mix them up so they're nice and fluffy and put them in that bag with there, and I have myself shepherd's pie. Way too much in. Idiot. I keep doing that. That's been in there a couple minutes now. All reconstituted. What I'm gonna do is add some mashed potatoes that I already did in that old juice that I dumped out.
Now the mistake I made when putting together these, this particular meal, is that I should have put the potatoes in a freezer bag, but I didn't, so I wasn't able to cook them in the bag. Otherwise I would have cooked both in the bag at the same time. But yeah. Shepherd's pie. Look at that pie, boy. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done a scrambled dough shout out before, but you rock, brother. Well, I'm enjoying a little bit of hot cider and, uh, I'm going to just finish the evening off resting. I'm going to just lay in the hammock and read and just chillax a little bit. Um, I'll bring you guys in if anything interesting happens, but yeah, I'll bring you guys in if anything interesting happens, but uh, otherwise, good night. See you in the morning.